This is everything you need to know about Hibi's latest entry into the R4 series, the R4. The Hibi R4 is the first of the R4 series. This is priced at $249 and features a rather peculiar but refreshing look that is unlike anything in the market currently. If you would like to see what the R4 comes with, you can check my full unboxing and first impressions on the link above or in the description. The R4 features an aluminum frame with a few glass and plastic parts on its design motifs. Starting with the back panel, which is arguably the most interesting side, you can find the charm or lanyard holder at the top with the plastic inside of the hole. I should point out that there are a total of four colorways that the R4 is featured in, with the black one being a Chinese-only exclusive and features Class AB amplifier and a longer battery life. The unit I chose was the orange variant because orange is nice. Coming back, you can find the orange or whatever color you pick plastic cover with the Hibi underscore R4 embossed on the right. On the left, you can find the tinted glass panel which features LED strips inside whenever the device screen is turned on. Moving down, you can find the usual disclaimers and descriptors of the device printed on the left side of the panel. Moving down from that, you can find another glass panel with the big O4 printed as well as high-res prints on the left. You can also find the indicators of where the ports are located below. Moving to the sides of the DAP, you can find the volume rockers as well as the SD card on the right side with the back panel facing up and the play, pause, skip, and power button found on the left side. On the bottom, you can find the Type-C jack, the 3.5mm jack, and the 4.4 jack. The Type-C jack uses a USB 3.2 and can transfer all the way to 5 gigabits per second. On top, you can find the function button. Moving to the screen, the R4 features a 4.7 inch 720 by 1280 60Hz IPS LCD screen. The LED indicator can be found on the top right through a long light strip. If the LED is green, it's playing an MQA file. If the LED is blue, it's playing an MQA studio file. If the LED is magenta, it's playing an MQA rendering file. If the LED is pale blue, the device is not playing. If the LED is yellow, it's playing PCM 48kHz and under. If the LED is cyan blue, it is playing PCM 64Hz all the way to 192kHz. If the LED is cyan blue, it is playing PCM 64kHz all the way to 192kHz. If the LED is orange, it is playing 192kHz. If the LED is white, it is playing DSD. The overall dimensions of the R4 is 129.6x68.3x18.5 mm and weighs 231 grams. The R4 also comes with a basic silicone case if you would like to protect your device from simple scratches and very light drops. As for internal specifications, the R4's brains is powered by the Snapdragon 665 with 3GB of RAM and 32GB of internal storage. The storage is expandable to 2TB. It's running on an open version of Android 12 with Hibi's custom OS that features Hibi's specific audio settings that we'll talk more about later, as well as Hibi's specific apps. The DAC featured on the R4 is the ES9018C2M in quad array fashion, which means that there are 4 DAC chips found in the R4. The amps that the R4 use are 4 OPA1652 and 2 OPA1612s. The battery use is a 4500 mAh 3.8V unit with a maximum charging speed of 20 watts with the use of PD 2.0. This ensures at most 2 hours of charging from 0 to 100 with the use of a PD fast charger. As for the features, let's talk about device specific features. The R4 uses Android 12 which means you are able to download applications from the App Store and APK non app store applications to your desire. The R4 is capable of decoding PCM 768kHz at 32-bit with support to DST256 and MQA16X. It also has Bluetooth 5.2 with support to APTX, APTX HD, LDAC, UAT, AAC, and SPC codecs. It also features Wi-Fi with support for 2.4GHz and 5GHz bands. You can use the R4 as an external DAC by plugging it into your PC, going to the USB settings, changing the USB setting to audio in, and you can choose to either charge your device by choosing to enable USB charging or to let the R4's battery drain by using disable USB charging. This only works unfortunately when plugging it into your PC and not your phone. It also features coaxial digital by using an appropriate Type-C to RCA interconnect. You can also use an external dongle to your choosing by plugging your chosen DAC, plugging it into the R4, and enabling exclusive playback if you plan to listen bit perfect on Hibi music. The R4 also features a function button that you can modify by going into settings, then into F and function key settings, and choosing your own 
setting. So far, the only function available is key lock and flip vertical, but I hope that it will be expanded upon one day. As the R4 runs on open Android 12 with Hibi OS, you have access to changing audio settings as well as utilizing Hibi Music's application and Hibi Cast. It also features system-wide BitPerfect audio thanks to Hibi OS integrated into Android 12. A professional version of Hibi Music made for the R4 is also featured with the R4. As for audio settings, the R4 features system-wide PEQ as well as Hibi's proprietary Mage Sound 8 Ball or MSEB that allows you to fine-tune to the exact sound you want out of your device. It also has Hibi exclusive plugins like Convolution, Fixed Sample Rate, Sound Field, and Balance, and more will be coming soon. There's also a dedicated gain switch that allows you to change the gain from low gain, medium gain, and high gain. Opening the device, you will find yourself in the setup menu of the R4, which will ask you your time zone and your language. You will also be asked what colorway of the R4 you got in order to determine the theme for your UI. After this, you're met with the home screen of the R4 with a preloaded wallpaper and icons that match the color of your DAP. We can also find the photo gallery, the file manager, Hibi Music, and via browser. Sliding up, we can find the basic apps such as the calculator, clock, file manager, files, Google Play Store, and settings as well as Hibi specific apps like HibiCast and Hibi Music along with the via browser. Sliding down, drop down bar, you can find the internet, Bluetooth, auto rotate, audio settings, gain settings, and nightlight. These are customizable by pressing the pen icon on the bottom left. You can also turn off the device with the power icon and go to the settings with the gear icon. Going deeper into the audio settings, you can change the low pass anti aliasing filter settings, the gain mode from low, medium, and high, Hibi exclusive plugins, system wide Mage Sound 8 Ball or MSEB, system wide PEQ, VST compensation, channel balance, max volume. MQA decoder, SPDIF digital volume lock, and USB digital volume lock. A concern that some people might have is that they don't like the icons that come with the R4. To change this, you may go into the settings, head over to the apps, go into default apps, click on the gear beside the home app, and change the icon style from orange or whatever color you have to original. And now let's talk about my personal experience with the Hibi R4. Now this is just for a few days, maybe a week of experience so far. I'm going to definitely be making another video going more in depth with my experience in like maybe a future video. But so far, I am absolutely in love with this thing. And I know it's probably not for everyone, but I honestly really like the design. Maybe not with the case here, but I really like how it looks. It's a breath of fresh air. It's very unique. And it's very interesting to look at, you know? I, you could argue that that little thing right there, that uh, glass panel could have been, you know, dedicated to something more useful, but that also would have made this a much less uh, desirable value for money. Also, I will say, despite the chonkiness of this device, I never found this to be unpocketable or unwieldy. It's like 231 grams. It's just a little bit heavier than a smartphone. And for its size and small, um, or it's not small, but it's short, uh stature i guess it doesn't feel too wieldy in the hand it is lighter than the uh, heavy r6 here by i think around 20 grams and it's slightly heavier than the r5 which was uh the i guess last generation of daps or uh, budget daps that Hibi has provided so it doesn't feel too overly heavy or too thick also the button placements honestly feel pretty like like it feels natural um, this is a problem that I've had with older Hibi sets where the button placements feel a little bit awkward, but the R4 honestly feels very natural. You got the power buttons, the display pause skip on one side, and just the volume naturally resting on your uh, index and your middle finger right here. And it's honestly pretty nice. Also, the inclusion of the lanyard or the charm hole is both an aesthetic and a practical thing because you could like loop this around your neck and guarantee that it's not going to get lost. Maybe it's going to get snatched if you're in a country where it's guaranteed that any electronics dangling out of you will get snatched. But in terms of like, let's say you don't want to put this in your pocket or you don't want to put this in your bag where it's going to get scratched up or whatever, you can just put it around your neck. It's pretty good and just pick it up out of the blue. Although um, Jonathan, uh, my good friend, said that it kind of feels a little bit weird because uh, the thing's down here. So when you're dangling, it's like dangling up and then dangling down. So it's 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 up to the usage. It's the person who's using it. It's who's gonna find that useful, anyways. Also, as for the build quality, yeah, no, I can't honestly have no problems with this thing. It's it feels very sturdy. Uh, even with or without the case, it feels very tough. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break in one drop. It's a full aluminum frame body, so it doesn't feel like bad at all. So good stuff. And as for performance, I don't have any problems uh, nav navigating stuff here. I haven't played games yet on this thing. Uh, I haven't really had the time to, 
but from the music listening that I've been doing, like just normal casually, casual whatever, and just scrolling around and hippie music or Spotify or uh, whichever app, maybe YouTube music, uh, no problems, no hitch no hikes, hikes, no hitches, uh, no, no lags, no stutters. Pretty impressed for uh, three gigabytes of RAM, but again, it's Snapdragon 665, so it's still pretty capable processor, even in today's world of, you know, uh, Helios or whatever new processors out there are out there. Yeah, Snapdragon 665 still does the job, especially for just a music player. It's good enough. And as for the UI, well, what can I say? It's stock Android. What well, kind of stock Android? It's a little bit modified for Hibby, but it's basically a stock Android experience. Like, I don't know what to say. It's a very clean, very unintrusive, and honestly, very easy to manage or easy to navigate uh, UI. You know, you could, you know, maybe complain about the icons being a little bit hard to, to read or see or whatever. But that's something you can turn off and just use your own. That's the beauty of Android. That's literally a very customizable device up to your liking. And you can make it whatever into you, whatever you want. I don't know if you can like do custom ROMs with this thing. Probably not. But as an Android device, anything in the App Store you can just use with this. As long as it doesn't use a camera or a SIM because it doesn't have that. But besides that, very customizable. It's up to you. Make your like UI even easier to understand if you're using like launch air or a nova launcher or something you can use it here you can however probably my biggest gripe about this thing is the battery life yes it's not the best i will tell you that uh i was running high gain with 4.4 balanced on this thing i'm oh, sorry not high gain medium gain and i was able to only scratch up a, uh, a good five hours from 80 9 I think or 84 all the way to 13% which means at max this is probably gonna last you around give or take six to eight hours on balanced and on high gain and much more uh, if you're using the 3.5 millimeters on low gain but still um, it's to be expected especially at this price you're gonna have some compromises and in this case it's the battery unfortunately also it kind of gets pretty hot but honestly it's like class a you're stuck with the class a it has to run hot it has to run hot for the cleanliness of the sound as much as possible but i guess like the last thing to talk about is sound um honestly there's not a lot to talk about specifically because in my opinion there's really not that big of a difference between daps but i guess with the r4 and i've recently tested this uh, uh in a meet where the r4 really just brings out a sense of neutrality and like how something is supposed to sound like it's not the most dynamic presentation it's not the most sparkly although there is a good amount of transparency and, and emphasis on transient response on this thanks to a uh, rather clean and crisp sound presentation but it's not colored or it's not harsh in any way um, it's not like the Heidi's XO where it's really a very transient and a very sharp, very technical sounding uh, source at the sake uh, or at, at the cost of sounding a little bit too sharp on especially sharp or bright IEMs. Uh, the R4 is much closer to a flat, neutral sound, perfect for pair pairing this to basically anything you want and not really having to complain about either being it too bassy or too warm or being too bright. So that's like my sound impressions of these things. Um, what makes the R4 unique, and I'm going to make a separate video about this, is just the fact that this is running Hibby OS. And you have a plethora of applications and audio settings that you can use to really perfectly nail down what kind of sound you want. And that's all thanks to the PEQ that is system-wide, as well as the MSEB, or the Mage Sound 8-Ball. And I'm going to go in-depth with that in another video but essentially those two things can basically turn this into whatever you want and don't forget the plugins this has hibby plugins convolution uh fixed uh, bit rate and i think in the future uh, another uh plugin called the drk 10x or drx 10k at yeah, drx 10k uh, it's not yet here but i was told by joe uh, Joe blogs of Hibby that they will be including it here in the future So definitely something to look forward to if you want even more customizability in the sound of your DAP Oh, right. I clearly forgot the power delivery of this thing uh, 525 milliwatts on the balance output. Uh, I was able to try this on the um, HD 600s uh, on balanced mode 
and it was basically more than enough for me personally. It was definitely slightly lacking in terms of overall dynamic presentation, but the way that this thing is tuned honestly sound made the HD 600 sound much better than I usually do with like um, something like I guess I'll give it the, the DX one. But as Larry said, uh, Larry Fulton said, uh, it's not really more than enough. You really need something more powerful for the HD 600. But honestly, if you really don't have it or if you don't have the source for the HD 600, uh, I really would say to invest. Uh, the difference between a lower powered source and a higher power source, at least on the HD 600, is just uh, like, I wouldn't say night and day difference. But if you're sensitive to your sound, you will definitely hear the difference. But we're, we're, we're getting off tropic, off tropic, off topic. We're going to the HD uh, 600. We're talking about the R4. But yeah, it's, it's basically a little powerful device that can drive um, most, if not all, IEMs that you throw this at and maybe easier to drive headphones. Oh, I was able to try um, the Audio Technica ATH AVA 500 on these and they sounded neutral as crap. It's, it's very bright. <laughs> that thing is kind of bright to my ears, um, but it sounded pretty good on this thing. So I, I really like that. And that's basically everything you need to know about the Hibby R4. Um, I don't know what else to say in terms of like my personal experience so far because I've already basically told it all to you. But yeah, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. But I genuinely think that this thing is a absolutely amazing value. It's a crazy value for the price. $249 for something this jam-packed is honestly if i were to recommend a beginner dap to someone and they don't want to sacrifice the functionality of their music player and they actually want to use this for other things besides just listening to like lossless music yeah the r4 249 dollars don't even think just just get one and yeah that's about it uh thank you so much for watching this video if you liked this video consider giving me a like if you like more of my content subscribe ding that notification bell i really appreciate it check out my socials down below consider following them i post a lot of my stuff and i've been doing shorts recently uh i'll post tiktok down down uh, you can just look at reels or shorts or whatever but i'll post my tiktok anyways um of course check audio notions go to the discord let's have some chat uh and join forsaken audio files on facebook and with that ob audio out